Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and this is my son Ben. And today we taste a Craiglachie Premier Barrel from Douglas Lang. Ooh, very nice. I've, I've stayed in the Craiglachie Hotel, but I've never been to the distillery. So you got to tell a bit more about the distillery. Yeah, the so. distillery is not too far away from the hotel. The hotel is at the... Uh, well, at the highway down at the River Spey, mm -hmm. and uh, the Craig Lachie uh, distillery is a little bit upward into the village uh, and is very in the middle of the town. So it's a huge place which uh, dwarfs all the small. <laughs> all the small houses around it. What's going on? <laughs> they, they are doing um, uh, alliteration. Uh, a rhyme that always begins with the same letter. It's it's uh, all over the bottle. It's courtesy to Craig Lachie's crispy cultured cultivation of candy cereals, creamy and custard, billowing a bonny barley balm befitting a bona fide bachus, no betterish, no betterich. Whatever that is, <laughs> half the words I don't know. <laughs> and they they have another another alliteration. Uh, uh, alliteration at, at the top, so it's it's really strange. <laughs> I don't know if it's the distillery who likes that or. Okay, no, not the distillery. It's it's the it's the Fred Lang. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so the distillery is part or was part of the Whitehorse Distillers mm -hmm. Company, and in the Whitehorse Distillers Company, uh, the Lagavulin was in. Mm -hmm. So it was from some. At some time, part of an uh, of a corporation, and uh, they produced a lot for the blended whiskey industry, and so this cask went as well to the uh, Douglas Lang uh, company for blending, blending purposes. But from time to time, they take out one or another cask for this premier barrel bottlings, and this one is uncolored, until filtered. 46% uh, ABV uh, and it's a single cask and was in particular bottled for us mm -hmm. and the bottle yes. is made from stone as it was a few hundred years ago and there had been some problems in the past with the cork but this is version 2 mm -hmm. now they did it the, ra the right way uh, and tolerances are very good so that the, the bottles aren't uh, leaking any longer yeah, really tight. They're yeah. good now. Yeah, and here on the top, uh, no, to the distillery, Kegelachi, mm -hmm. uh, it's said they are producing uh, smoky and non-smoky whiskey. I never had a real smoky whiskey from Kegelachi. And uh, then they, they have a process, a production process, which increases the taste of sulfur. And they do it by will. So a lot of people say, oh, I don't like the sulfur from the sherry gas, something. Mm -hmm. uh, and they say, well, we promote the sulfur in our whiskey. This is the right way how it was before, 100 years, 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. so weird. Uh, I'm not, I have no problem with sulfur. Probably I was raised in, in a region in, in Germany where sulfur was always around in the air. So it was always sour on my tongue. Mm. It's... Uh, sulfur dioxide and this brings this light, lightly sour acid in your mouth so sulfur is not strange for me sulfur is a good remembrance to my <laughs> to <laughs> to use use. <laughs> yeah so uh, this is to say to the distillery itself and, and on the cork on the stopper here on the top it says to open twist upwards yeah you made a video about yeah, that how, how to, to open a whiskey open bottle. bottle if you put it out straight, you might crack it. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a sticking friction and a Twisting gliding. Foot. Sticking, yes, sticky gliding friction and the gliding friction. And that's less and so. The gliding friction is less, so you first have to overcome the sticky friction. Now it glides, and when it glides, you turn it upward, mm -hmm. and this is perfect. For a whiskey bottle, it's actually pretty uh, important to do that. Because a whiskey bottle, you don't drink, uh, I don't know, six of a liter. You don't drink a pint of it or something like that. Some do. Some do. But, uh, <laughs> wow. These people don't have a problem with the cork then. No. Nope. But uh, <laughs> if you if you only drink a glass and you open it, reopen it, close it, open it, close it. 35 times. So you, you probably 
open and close the bottle 35 times. So that's really important to treat the cork well. well yes, and in, not in contrast to a wine bottle where you have a uh, one time use. Yeah, one or two times, but one or two times is normal. And yeah. this is a, this is a, what you call it, a, a, a use cork and the other one is just a closing cork. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So first is, first, this is the second sip I have. The first have been very sweet. Now the first nose is a lot of vanilla and, and caramel, as I said, this premier uh, bourbon notes. In the back there's a little citrus, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It's a, it's a, when you, when you first touch it, you only feel the, the smoothness, niceness and like fruitiness, a bit of citric note, and when you stick in your nose a bit deeper, you do get a bit of a uh, spices, a bit of nutmeg, and also a bit of a deep note of, I don't know, spicy grapes. Is there some such thing as spicy grapes? Yeah, it's probably. Pretty, yeah, Muscateller. Muscateller, <laughs> but like spice and grapes. <laughs> yeah. So like, there's a little, like a deep, I get some dark, spiciness dark in, the, in, in, in the back, but but not very strong in the moment because it's just the, the smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, full in my mouth. A little bit oily, and then spiciness intensity comes up. It's mouth watering. So it's a lot of intensity in that cask, and the forty-six percent is just right to to power the whiskey in your mouth. Mm. Mm. Carries it quite nicely, but for me the the oily part is it's a bit more dominant. Mm -hmm. So it's I think it's really oily in your mouth and really nice and really sweet, pleasant, fruity, and when you swallow it. Then you do get the aftertaste, which is a bit more strong, intense, spicy, intense, and some oaky, probably licorice in the back, but mm. but not bitterness. No, mm. probably it's, it's a, too young for a bitterness. It's too young for a bitterness, but it, it's for a nine-year-old. It's quite, quite, quite strong in the aftertaste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it got a lot from the cask. Mm. There's a little maltiness in it as well, and uh, yeah, it's it's not that cheap. It's around sixty, mm -hmm. um, but it's unchill filtered, uncolored, forty six percent ABV, a single cask, and has this wonderful classic bottle which is made from stone, and uh, well, and and this is what increases the price a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's mm. incredible for a nine year old. Yeah. If I had it in my mouth I would I would have said kinda of, I don't know, twenty year old. It's a bit it's a bit too straightforward for a twenty year old. Yeah. But it's it has that deepness of a twenty year old with a bit of a that youth from a nine year old. Yeah. Nice. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's for only for the whiskey.de customers, so it's probably not available anywhere near you. Yeah. But um, there are some other premier barrels. Mm -hmm. So if you if you get a catch for for these these bottles, are usually quite good. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, then please feel free to share it with your friends. And see you next time.